Um, I think it's important to understand what's actually happening here is that we have our source now generating or emitting these particles. It's not even emitting them, it's it's generating them. And they're being pulled out because we put a gravity space warp in. And uh, I'm going to get rid of this little grid. You hit G on your keyboard. Um, that gets rid of that. So what we see are the particles that are being generated from 0 to 1. It's an amount of 200 particles. And um, that's fine. We'll leave it like that for right now. I want to click on my display. I want to switch this from ticks to dots to dots. <laughs> I'm too lazy. I won't even edit that out. I set the color to white. So, okay, that's what we have. Now I'm going to put in another operator. I'm going to put in... Uh, what am I going to put in? I want to put in a speed by surface. Ah, oh, there they are. The next column over. Speed by surface. I want to drag that right above the force. Because I want that to happen actually technically first. Speed by source, I want to set the, or surface, I'm sorry, speed by surface. You want to set the surface, add again, and click on your plane. Plane we can rename to uh, ground plane oh, forward slash, uh, nah, well, just ground plane, that's fine. Hit enter. See it updates in here automatically. Okay, so now we have the speed set by um, the ground plane, which means that it's going to look at the polygon, which way the polygon is facing, um, you know, X, Y, or Z. Or if you're a bizarre um, um, Canadian person, it would be X, Y, and Z. I think they also are very strange over in uh, the UK. They might also say Z. I know they say it in other places, but this America, you know, where we do things backwards, we still work uh, empirical. We're not metric quite yet. We still have a ways to catch up. Forgive me. <coughs> so for now, we're going to stick with Z, X, and Y, and that's it. So we see that the uh, the polygon is facing straight up. It's Z axis, so that's where the speed is going to be set by. Uh, if we do it by surface normals, we will get that exact thing. Uh, let's let's not set speed by surface though. Let's set speed by icon. Just uh, when you get that red line right in the middle of it, it means you're going to override it. Otherwise, if you get the blues, it'll go right below or right above it. So let's uh, let's uh. What am I? What am I doing? All right, I'm going back to speed by surface. Plow, plow. I make sure my surface is centered. And we can change the variation. If we have 300, I like to cut it in half. Uh, it's all up to you. Let's say uh, 300, half of that, of course, is 150. Divergence will set... Um, divergence is how far off course these things will go, how, first, how, fa how far they are, uh, how much they diverge. <laughs> divergence. Um, we'll set, we could set that to 180 because we want it to go everywhere like a firework, pow. Gravity still taking... Uh, uh, still taking over. All right, so here's what I was, oh, oh, here's what I was talking about with the gravity. If we feel that like maybe that's exploding a little too fast, like those particles are dropping too quick, um, we can set the influence of the force. So there's no frame drop in there. All right. Um, so 
So we feel that, I, I, well, I do anyway. I feel the gravity is pulling too hard. So what I'll do is I'll select my force, and I want to drop the influence here down to 500, which, of course, is half of 1,000, which is the default absolute. That's fine. And that, that right there is the same thing as if we just clicked on the gravity and then set it to 0.5. But instead of controlling the gravity overall, we just controlled it in this one event here, initial droplet. So, we will now, we want it to collide or interact with our um, deflector we put in earlier. So we'll put in a collision spawn below everything. Um, now we have to select the, the deflector by list. I'm just going to do it. Deflector, double click. So now what we have is the particles will hit that, uh, um, the deflector and bounce, um, as deemed by the deflector properties. So like we have a bounce. So I'm going to put that to zero. There's no variation to that bounce. Um. Chaos, everything. I'm going to turn the fi friction all the way up and turn that to zero. So now what's happening is that as soon as they hit um, the uh, the uh, the deflector, is they're moving to the next event because that's what this little um, this little guy here says. It gives us the option to move to the next event, and since there is no next event, they just um, <coughs> They go back underneath of the gravity because we're not telling it to do anything different. So it just goes back to where it was. It's still being influenced because it's still in the same event. So, okay, let's say that we want it to bounce up. We'll, um, we'll add a speed by surface again. And what we could actually do is you um, hold down shift and drag this out and you can copy it or instance it. And that's the same thing, and not only that, but we'd still have our ground plane selected, but um, like I said, we're going to do things the way that I think make it more, most simple for everybody. So, speed by surface, we want to select the, um, the ground plane again, add ground plane. You know it's right because it comes up in here, and you want to connect... See, now when it goes to that event, it takes on the um, the properties of the event, such as we're getting pink or fuchsia-colored ticks instead of our white dots. Let's go ahead and change that to circles, and we will also make them white. Normally, I just keep them all dots, but so we get the idea that it's moving to the next event, we will do that. So, what do we see here? We see these uh, in event 2, which is, we will rename, we'll call it um, uh, first con contact. So, what we see is when they contact, then they just move along their way, because we're not telling them to do anything else again. What we need to do is we'll set speed by surface. Also, now we will, uh, well, no, we won't. We'll just drag in another um, force. 